Hello. Oop. Oh, I got rid of the music. Hold on. <laughs> I actually remembered to set the, the sound for once. Hello and welcome back to Let's Try it. We're trying Brotato. Now, I've already played this game and I really like this game. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it uh, with uh, some different settings just to just to give it a go. Um, there's been a um, pretty like large insurgence of this kind of game. And what what is this kind of game? I honestly I feel like we need to come up with a description for this kind of game because it um, you know like I, I've been having this conversation uh, on my stream occasionally, which is uh, like what is a roguelike anymore? Like, what does that mean? I don't think anything, like, you know, I, I, I honestly, I said on my on my Twitter the other day, it's like, it feels like when everything is a roguelite, nothing is. Um, so what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about games with procedural generation, permadeath, and uh, probably a little a little bit of progression in, in the form of some upgrades or items or uh, a little bit of stacking stats, you know? That's really all we're talking about. How do we quantify those things? Like, are, are those, you know, like everything has those kind of things nowadays. So um, it's hard to say, well, that makes it a roguelite. I don't know if it does. I, I don't think it does. Um, because everything has that. So, you know, it's just a meaningless staple now. It doesn't even describe a genre anymore. It just describes like you know the common action game that comes out but what are we really talking about well we're talking about maybe not a roguelike but a vampire survival like <clears throat> and I i'm sure eventually that will become meaningless as well because we're already seeing games that deviate from that genre uh i recently uh covered i, I didn't cover it on my channel but i, I tried out uh 10 minutes till dawn which has been described a lot by a lot of people as being like survive vampire survivals. I actually kind of disagree. I think uh, it's going to be my spicy take, maybe, that I, I disagree. I don't think it is like vampire survivors because we're starting to see already deviation from uh, the model uh, of what, you know, what vampire survivors is. We're seeing a lot of games that are coming out that are similar. I'm going to take health regeneration similar in some ways but um thankfully they they're doing different things they're not uh following it strictly like a format um so you know like and it's not like vampire survivors was like super original either right it had things in it that a lot of other games have have had they just it just blended them up in a satisfying way you know we've seen arcade games before we've seen games with uh upgrades and stat based progression and stuff like that we've seen all of that before and in fact we've even seen maybe some of the artwork in vampire survivor not to not to dunk on vampire survivor i like that game a lot um so you know now that we're seeing other games similar to it in certain ways i think it's disingenuous to imply that uh these games are just strictly speaking ripoffs of vampire survivors um all of this to say that this game is like vampire survivors with some fairly um significant differences for the first uh, first thing like okay um this game's got very different kind of weaponry. Like, uh, you know, I think that's the the first way that a lot of these games are going to differ. Like, you know, Seraph's Last Stand uh, was very different from Vampire Survivors because it was a 2D platformy kind of game, but it still had enemies spawning in in waves, and it still had you know like stat-based progression and upgrades that kind of synergize, and it felt similar in its in the way that it is satisfying. This game, oh, we, we lost. That was a weird sound. Um, this game does something kind of neat right away in that it lets you, it gives you a bunch of different characters. Um, I don't think that this game has any, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it. I don't think it has any meta progression. I've been hearing more people kind of talk about this um, that, you know, I think, I think uh, like some people definitely enjoy uh, meta progression in their game. I like it in the form of replayability. I like it when meta progression is added in the form of making the game more replayable. But I don't like it when uh, you're basically improving your odds of, of success. 
Um, and I know I understand fully that uh, these games are not necessarily all about success. They're about making it as far as you can and, and the kind of the micro game inside. Uh, burning spreads to a nearby enemy. That could be cool. Yeah, let's take that. This game's got some really cool and unique weaponry that uh, kind of uh, sorts it, like separates it from other games. And it just feels different. Like the way that it spawns the enemies in, first of all, it's got fairly unique enemies um, in that they they feel unique from each other, right? Like a lot of these games, like, like Vampire Survivors, what they tend to do is kind of flood you with enemies and a lot of them will look different, but most of them will behave very much the same. This game endeavors to give you, um, flood you with enemies, but each enemy is unique in a very significant way. And you do have to kind of learn um, their behaviors in order to safely navigate them. For instance, these guys are very slow moving, so I know that I can like shoot them. And I know how they, they move around, like I, I, can, I can move around them pretty effectively without worrying if I'm gonna touch them or not. Then you have those uh, fairly light, light colored kind of aliens or mutants or I don't know what these things are to be honest. I know those things are faster so I'm gonna have to prioritize them. Um, I don't really have much choice in what I shoot. It's really just the creature that is closest to me. So knowing that I can kind of uh, make changes to my movement to prioritize which enemies that I'm going to shoot first. Uh, eventually, and I think you already saw it, there are enemies that are going to be firing um, projectiles at you. Uh, and at that point, we're we're gonna want to prioritize shooting those things because uh, too many of the, here, here they are actually. Uh, eventually, they can become such a problem that uh, they they you know will be the main thing that that hurts you, or maybe that's just me. Um, so that's interesting. I mean, the fact that we can't um, like. We, we have no direct control over how we attack or who we attack. That's not uh, unique in these games, but this game does do an interesting thing with that in that it kind of makes it a challenge you have to work around rather than um, just like an inherent passive mechanic. Like Vampire Survivors, yeah, you can't really control how you attack, but that's not really a problem because your weapons become so ridiculous that you're basically a, a, a moving projectile at all times. Um, this game, the projectiles are a bit more specific and they're a bit more significant and you you really do have to kind of uh, work around them. Um, okay, so do we, I'm not really getting very good power ups. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take speed crit. Uh, I think we want another weapon. So, oh, I don't have enough. What, why can't I take this? Oh, is it because I'm a sharpshooter? Uh, all damage and gains are increased by 100%. You can only equip one weapon at a time. Interesting. So does that mean I have to discard this? This is damage one. Okay, we're going to discard that, and then we're going to equip the brass knuckles. All right, that's interesting. So the characters are very different from each other as well. I actually did win a run. Um, so whether or not there's meta progression or not, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to go ahead and say that there isn't, uh, I was able to win without it. I'm 90% I'm, I'm sure that it doesn't have it. Um, the characters are actually very significantly different from each other. The one I won with was the kind of knuckler who got a, um, a, a huge advantage from specifically the fist weapon. And the fist weapon is a shorter range weapon. Um, so you have to work around it. I died, oh, that sucks. Actually, you know what? Let's do let's do the brawler because I, I understand how they work better and I'll be able to build them a bit better. So um, generally speaking, and I think that this is subject to change, but most of these characters can have up to, but only six weapons. So that means you can have six weapons equipped. And that's an interesting limitation because a lot of these games are kind of like, oh, well, just go for it. Your every single upgrade is, is fair game. And you know, your world is a smorgasbord of, of weapons that you can take and just go ahead and take them all. In this game, no, that's not the case. Uh, you, you have to be a bit more specific. Um, we can take other weapons, and now that I know that how to discard it, uh, how to discard weapons, and I'll, I'll be a bit more um, liberal in taking weapons. When I played this character, what I ended up doing was just kind of like holding off, hold, saving my currency until I saw fists, and then I got to the point where I had enough currency that I could just kind of keep re-rolling 
uh, the board until I started seeing fists, and uh, that was that that worked quite well for me because you do do quite a lot of damage with the fists, and I also tried to get as much attack speed as possible. And this game gets really difficult. I think it only lasts for ten waves. Sure, I'll take a mushroom. Yeah. Um, definitely, I want armor, but range would be nice as well. Um, so we don't really want any of those. I'll, I'll hold off for now. Things get really difficult. There's only about four or five enemies. Um, so those enemies have to act fairly significantly different from each other. And they do. Um, they definitely progress in a challenging way. And all in all, I, I kind of, I, I really appreciate how this uh, game like dumps enemies on you. It does it in a fairly intelligent way. I don't think it's just random. It feels a bit more coherent. Like they're putting enemies in specific areas to force you to move in a specific way. Like a lot of these games, Vampire Survivors including, uh, you can't really, you, you can kind of get away with just like kiting them in one big circle and eventually they throw, um, they throw curve balls at you to force you to, uh, piercing damage can't go above base damage. Nah, let's reroll. Let's start rerolling. There's another fist. There we go. Um, eventually they throw curve balls at you, like having enemy, you know, big circle circles that, uh, kind of inhibit your movement or having, uh, enemies that like s s spawn in huge swarms. So that's how they add the variety, right? And then they force you to move uh, a little bit differently, right? But um, this game, like, there's not a lot of that. There's not a lot of, like, inhibiting your movement. Instead, it feels to me like they're spawning enemies uh, in, a, in an intelligent way that makes you kind of have to think about how you're moving at all times uh, and not necessarily, like, at specific event circumstances. So that's interesting to me. Um, I, I know I'm like, I am kind of theory crafting that, but just based on like the couple of games I've played, I've definitely like constantly had to think on my toes and not just like, oh yeah, I can just kite these guys in a big circle, like treat it like geometry wars, you know? Uh, I'm definitely going to increase our speed. Ooh, melee damage. Yeah, well, is it, be is three better than plus 15% damage? Who could say? What is our melee damage at right now? Melee damage is at zero. Damage is at zero. So who can say which is better? I don't know. I'm gonna try uh, melee damage. We'll see if that's better. Let's, uh, I kind of want the flamethrower just to see what the flamethrower looks like. I will say, I was gonna say um, about this game is, you know, it reminded me like when I booted this up, uh, it had been recommended by quite a few people. Uh, and when I booted it up, I, I just like I got a flashback uh, That's not a pun, but it's gonna sound like one to the days of you know, like Flash games and armor games and new grounds and I also like remember uh, pretty vividly remember when uh, like um, Flash games used to be an insult like you used to say like you'd hear people say like oh Can you imagine paying for a flash game? And now I'm thinking, you know what? You should be so lucky because like those days are kind of behind us. Yeah, we are in kind of a renaissance of like really incredible games coming out all the time. But like, I kind of miss that like really ad hoc, um, you know, janky flash game era. And this game really, like I'm not saying it's janky, but it definitely does feel like that um, kind of like brew of experimental meats um you know just kind of like it is a little bit crude and i i say that as a as a positive i i appreciate that it's crude i'm gonna take those glasses those glasses are gonna work out for us we're gonna re-roll a couple times Ooh, extra melee damage. oh i can't take it i do wish you could freeze um power-ups kind of like you can in draft games um otherwise maybe it'd be nice if it didn't show me powers that I can't possibly get but um, I under I appreciate that you know re-rolling is a risk right so now we have these new enemies that charge at you um, these guys can be a problem they can definitely spice things up a bit they're not as much of a problem as you would think though because they tend to get up in your grill before charging and that means that you have a good chance of hitting them also I mean I'm rolling a melee build 
which means that I have to be very close to enemies usually at all times and, and then I do uh, very like high damage so uh, my build kind of works to um, you know nerf them a bit works against them very well I will say there is a couple of mechanics I don't really understand. There's an interesting way that this game treats XP versus currency. So you might have noticed that I both level up and also buy items and equipment and weapons and stuff like that. Um, those are definitely, they're, they're different stats and they're treated slightly differently. But also the way that we get XP doesn't, uh, our money doesn't quite make sense to me. Like you'll notice that all of the coins that I didn't pick up there end up in a bag. And I don't understand what that bag is doing. <laughs> like, what is that money? Is that money? Is that XP that I just get, or um, is it uh, is it different? Like, is it um, is it g giving it to me as experience, or is it giving it to me as currency, or is there possibly like some kind of planned me meta progression that's going to uh, like all of your not picked up cash is going to just go uh, towards your your meta progression currency. I'm gonna reroll again. Yeah, the nice thing about the fist is it's cheap. Um, so you can reroll basically as much as you want, even though it costs like a hundred, because the fist is gonna be the best weapon for this character. This build is ending up very similar to the one that I did, which I'm totally cool with because I really enjoyed it and it helps me show off how hectic this game gets. Like, even a good build, oof, uh, ends up looking like pure chaos. We can recover from this. We can recover from this. I'm hoping for a tree. Oh god, please don't. Oh, there we go. There's the food. Okay, took a bit more damage there, but I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. Please. Please. Oh, I, I died. Oh, shoot. I was doing really well there. All right, let's try, let's try a different build. Uh, max HP, I don't like that. 150 range with knives. Plus 20 attack speed. You start with one knife. Dodge and accuracy. Okay, let's try this. Oh, we start with an extra knife. Okay. I gotta say the sound design in this game is really satisfying. It's almost a little bit, like, gross. Like, it almost, like, it gives me the same visceral feeling I get from, like, ASMR. Uh, not the... I, I watch that stuff, but like, you know, like some of the liquid sounds are a little bit overly liquid. Let's get some accuracy to make up for our accuracy. I'm gonna get that third knife. That's a nice roll for our first weapon. I like the idea of certain characters being good with certain weapons because it, um, it encourages you um, both to experiment also to like, hold off for your weapon so you could like take a weapon knowing that you can discard it later um and that's totally fine you can you can take like six weapons right away they just won't synergize very much with your build um but it might be better than like spending a hundred coins to uh you know re-roll um let's get some more range that looks good uh we could like we could get a double barreled shotgun for instance it'd be kind of nice Sure, let's get a double barrel shotgun. I wouldn't mind just seeing some of the other guns and how they work. Okay, so the shotgun has some insane spread. It's really cool. The, the, the weapons all feel like satisfyingly significant in how they are separated from each other. Like, you know, they, they don't just feel like, oh, okay, this, this is just the gun again, but with a little bit of uh, you know, spread like they feel they feel significant. They feel like you're gonna you're gonna want to work around them in different ways. And again, like the sound direction or the sound uh, design in this game makes them s really satisfying. It makes a difference, you know. Okay, um, did I accidentally take something just now? I think I did. Let's go ahead and take extra accuracy. Um, head injury, less range, but more damage. Sure. And sure, let's take extra health as well. <laughs> I like, I also like, um, I always appreciate it when a game, um, changes the look of your character based on the weapons and items you've gotten. This game takes that to some really funky extremes, which I appreciate. It's just like, yeah, I mean, your character changes, but not necessarily in ways that make sense. I mean, 
you picked up a, an item that doesn't really make any sense um, for like the stats that it gave you. Um, so like, it's gonna change your character, but who knows what that means? Like, yeah, you you dude looks like he's fresh out of the hospital. All right. Um, yeah, I definitely want some more speed. Uh, ugly tooth hitting an enemy removes three percent of their speed, max fifteen percent, but it also reduces our speed. I'm gonna reroll these. Oh, another knife, and I'll take the lost duck. That sounds like a good. I have no idea what luck does. But uh, I'm, a, I'm gonna assume that it's something that we want. I like the idea of like stats you don't necessarily understand how they function, but I'd like to make a build or just experiment with a build where I take nothing but that set and see what changes. That was something that was kind of interesting in uh, Binding of Isaac is like, yeah, I'm gonna take just luck or I'm gonna try and get as much luck as possible and see, and see how it affects my run. It might be that certain stats don't actually do anything unless you're they're paired with certain guns, right? So this is working out pretty well. I'm at wave five and I'm doing all right. Of course, we're not really at the hectic stage of this game just yet. But you'll, you might notice that these waves um, last, like as you go on, the, the waves last longer. Oh, I want that. Cost me a bit of health, but I want it. Okay, melee damage, range damage. Yeah, we'll take that. Extra range, we could take that to make up for the range that we just lost. Ooh, another knife, perfect. You recover 10 additional HP from consumables, plus 20 luck. Sure, let's double down on this luck. You have a greater chance of finding items or consumables when you kill enemies. Okay, so it just straight up tells you what luck is. That's kind of nice. Burning damage deals zero damage, more damage per half second. Your melee attacks deal five additional damage. Okay, so it's very transparent about what some of these stats do, and I can really appreciate that. Let's re-roll. Oh, I wish I could afford this goat skull. Again, I kind of wish I could, like, freeze an item. I guess if you added that, though, you'd have to account for the fact that, like, how expensive is it to re-roll? Would it be worth someone just like re-rolling an item if you could just freeze whatever item you want? I don't know, it kind of works in drafting games. I, I, I don't see why it wouldn't work in this game, but maybe they tried it and it didn't work. So I'm willing to believe that they did that. I've been playing a little bit of Nova Drift lately, um, which I might re, I don't think I've covered it for the channel, but it's not necessarily a new game. Um, and something I appreciate in that, oh wow, that ended suddenly. Jeez, uh, I'm gonna have to take some more health in the future. Let's try a different run and this'll be the last one. Um, extra luck, plus 50% XP needed to gain levels, interesting. Plus 50% damage, plus 50% number of enemies, interesting. Plus, plus negative 50% XP needed to gain levels, plus 50% items price. Let's try that, that sounds interesting. Um, Pistol, I don't know, we could try like a stick. We'll try a stick. Something I appreciate in Nova Drift is that it outright tells you is like, you are not, you're less likely to get upgrades that do not synergize with your build. This game is, it, it's meant to be about the synergies and be satisfying in that way. So we're not gonna like hold you back by offering you things that don't really make sense for your build or don't work with the build in some way. Um, let's take attack speed. So I can't afford anything for a while. So I, I do appreciate that that's something that the game th thinks about. Something I really appreciate like when developers what think about is, you know, sometimes uh, it, it, there's a real tendency or um, temptation to balance a game so that it, it like the difficulty scales so that it, it is constantly challenging. And I can appreciate that. But I also think that, oh yeah, that, that was not going to. There's no way that was gonna work out. Um, there's, I, I would, I say, I would say that there's a tendon, there's a, um, something to be said about a game that is fun, <laughs> you know, like, and I think that it's always fun to snowball. 
um, to, to, to have a runaway run. I know it's maybe not interesting to snowball in exactly the same way, so that's where you add some kind of replayability. And of course, if the game doesn't challenge you at all, then it's not interesting. But I play a few games um, where it's like, okay, this game is like really, really difficult and very, very punishing, and it's got all kinds of restrictions in to make sure that I am constantly scaled, like my damage is scaling downwards like enemies are basically getting more health more uh hp and, and and there's damage reduction and stuff like that to ensure that i can't snowball and i think that that is just not very interesting i think that that's just as boring in in the other direction um i i would say you know i want to um i guess i want to oh i don't know what i took there just now Sure, let's take another rock, why not? Um, I guess I just want to, like, you know, encourage or, or highlight when I think that a game has done a good job of ensuring that, the, the you know, the player can snowball in a fun and satisfying way. And, I mean, this one doubles in that it is it also stays challenging. I mean, I have died, like, three or four times while I've showcased it. So I think it's fair to say that it's challenging enough. But it also allows you to take some like interesting synergies and snowball in an interesting way. Oh. This rock build is not really working. Oh yeah, let's take extra range. That might actually help quite a bit. Plus 10, oh, and then let's cut our range in half. Sure, why not? Let's absolutely double down on a bad idea. I like the idea that the, the, the main um, thing that inhibits this character is that things are more expensive, as I understand it. Actually, I don't know. I think that was the last run. That's This is a different run, maybe. Um, I like the idea that we, the only thing we can afford is rocks, so we, we just have to make rocks work. The, the range on the rocks does not feel very good right now. <laughs> yeah, that, that run was actually awful. Uh, I, I kind of want to do one more. Yeah, this was, sorry, this was extra speed. This is the one that made items cost more. Lifesteal with sticks. You start with one stick. Sure. What I need um, is to take more health. The, the run that I won, I had um, a lot of dodge, so I was able to not take a lot of damage. But also I had way more health, so that allowed me to, um, you know, t actually take a hit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look specifically for that. So we're gonna we're gonna forego all of all of that stuff. Also, something I've noticed I didn't really notice when I f played this first is that, um, yes the objective is ultimately to survive but i notice that you don't really get anything specifically for surviving you just get the xp and the currency that you um pick up right so in a way you're actually really encouraged to take risks because you want to make sure you kill as many enemies as possible which is interesting um let's improve our attack speed 25% chance to deal one burning damage. That could be interesting. I th think I want to have some HP regeneration. I guess we have life steal, so this is maybe a little bit redundant. Hold on. Oh, interesting. I just realized the bag, the, the, the bags where the coins uh, go kind of get dumped on the floor after killing enemies like I saw the number reducing so it might be that you don't actually get to keep that money it just gets dumped on the floor in the form of uh, like when when you're in the next stage I don't know how I feel about that that's very bizarre we definitely want more health there um, more luck would be nice but I'm gonna take more damage max HP for sure I'm gonna reroll. Extra crit chance, less armor. Burning spreads to a nearby enemy. We don't have burning. Plant. We can't afford any of this, so. Yeah, I don't know. Does it does it mean you get more? Or oh! Oh, you get times two. 
So I, in a way, that just kind of means that you get a little bit of currency plus the currency you didn't pick up in the last stage. So it's kind of like stockpiling the money for your next level. So you don't get it, you just get it eventually. It's an interesting way of doing things. I guess it means that you are still encouraged to kill enemies because you are eventually, you are gonna get that money back. You're just not gonna get it right away. You can't spend it right away. So um, if you go out of your way to collect the money on the floor, you get to spend that right away. So you're encouraged to pick it up, but um, you're doubly encouraged to kill enemies because you're ensuring that you're going to get more money in general. I think that's a really interesting way of doing things. Oh, we definitely want that stick. To deal one damage to a random enemy when an enemy dies, luck. Sure, let's try that. We could take some luck items. We got an extra stick. I I think that's really cool. That's actually a really clever way of like, you know, encouraging the player to do exactly what you want without um, just kind of giving them the prize. That you're making them work a little bit for it, um, and it also ensures that you don't they don't get like a ton of money to spend right away. They have to they have to go a little bit out of their way to get it. That's cool. I like that. Either way, I, I like I can't really break down mechanically what this game is doing correctly, but it is super addictive and really, really satisfying. We're getting we're getting that life steal, which is nice. I wouldn't mind having if I could get some more uh, health and also maybe a bit more luck this run could start shaping up into a, maybe a win extra dodge we're doing good on the dodge let's continue with that dodge extra crit damage could be interesting oh our damage is reduced let's take the damage try and make up for that do we have burning yet i don't think we do oh no we to Deal one damage to a random enemy when an enemy dies. No, that's not, that doesn't really synergize. Let's uh, re-roll. Baby elephant, chance to deal one damage to a random enemy when you pick up a material. Sure, <laughs> that's, that's kind of weird. Uh, I want some sticks. Oh, I wish I could afford that duck. Okay, so we're at uh, charging enemy wave. This game's got a little bit of uh, Binding of Isaac in it as well, like a OG Binding of Isaac in it, which is not a bad thing. Uh, oh my god. Wow. A run can end like in the snap of a finger if you're not careful. All right, that's going to do it for Brotato. Uh, short ish look at, but I think that it, it doesn't take long to get the gist of this game. And also, I, I you know, just like straight up highly recommend this one. You could, you, you could definitely get this is the demo, by the way. This is straight up the demo, and, and it looks like, it really does feel like there's nothing held back. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the actual full game uh, of this looks like, because it can only, it can only just be more, and I, I would, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the more looks like. And honestly, if the, the full game is in the demo, that's really cool too, in a way. Uh, I'd really like to, to even just support the dev if the if the full game was just like hey it's the demo again but um you're supporting me for developing the game i would 100 percent drop some money on that anyway uh if you are if you did enjoy this definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this and i'll see you guys next time take it easy Let's go.